Hi friends, Will here. I was browsing a plugin website earlier today and I saw someone trying to sell a plugin to create a before and after effect slider. I'm sure you've seen it before, any kind of preset pack uh, or LUT pack, if you've seen them advertised, it's video and then it, it sort of swipes across the screen and shows you the before and after of using the LUT. It can obviously use them as well for things like home decor before and after kind of transformations. But I just thought it was crazy that firstly someone's selling that as a plugin for Final Cut Pro and secondly that obviously people must be buying it because actually that is such a simple effect uh, to achieve without any plugins whatsoever. So um, I just thought I would make a quick video to show you how to make a basic before and after slider for, you know, in this instance, I'm gonna use for like, let, let's say it's a LUT or something, right? So we're gonna dive into my screen and we're gonna show you how to do a simple before and after. So a quick uh, version here, look, I've got this little bit of drone footage here and as we play this through, we've got that swipe across and I've used like a really full on black and white so that you can really see the transition. So I'll just play that again, swipes across and then as an added bonus, if you want, you can also use like a white line to sort of divide so you can show it even more. So here's one like so. So simple to do, so let's get into it. So I've got here a clip of face, brunette, attractive young woman, stand, smile, look around in forest, outdoors. It's a story box clip, great name, great name for a clip. Um, so first of all, we've put that clip onto the timeline and what we're gonna do is we're going to hold option on the keyboard click and drag and duplicate that clip and place it on top so it's perfectly lined up. Then we're going to add whatever it is our effect to this top clip. So I'm gonna add custom LUT, uh, drag that onto there and then I'm just gonna choose a LUT, let's use this one. And I'm not saying that looks good, but for the sake of this example, I wanted to use something that is quite different in appearance to the original clip. So this is our after, right? So we've got our before underneath and our after up on top. So in order to create the sort of transition effect, we're going to use a basic mask. Where are we masks, mask. And we're gonna use a draw mask. So I'm gonna drag this draw mask onto our top clip. And then I'm gonna zoom out slightly on my viewer window. And let's do a, a right to left transition. So I'm gonna draw four control points in a sort of rectangle just off the screen. So from here, I'm going to come over to my inspector window, find my mask, come down to control points here, and I'm going to set a keyframe for where I've drawn the mask. Now I'm gonna move the playhead to where I want my swipe transition to end. Let's make this one quite quick. So I'll move the timeline across there, and then Back in the viewer window, I'm going to select this control point and then I'm gonna hold shift and select this control point and then I can grab this line and drag it across my clip until it's all now in the shot. Now, as I've moved that, it's automatically added the keyframes here. You can see because of this yellow diamond that's appearing. So if we play that through now, you can see that is a simple swipe, a before and an after. Simple, right? That's it. Now, if you wanted to have that white line to divide it, I'll show you that bit next. We're going to come over to our titles browser and we're gonna come down to generators and we've got, is it elements? Yes, elements under generators. And then we've got shapes. So I'm gonna drag a basic shape on top. And then in the inspector window for the basic shape, I'm going to select 
rectangle and I'm going to turn off the fill and I'm going to change the outline color to white like so and then I'm going to transform this so that it is the full height just uh, zoom out a bit so that we can do this zoom out some more so I'm just dragging this shape and I can use the scale to scale up until that white line covers the entire thing. I'll do shift T again and I'll just stretch it. So now we've got this white rectangle which is sort of majoritively outside of the frame. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it so it's just outside the left of the frame like so and I'm also going to come back to here and I'm just going to turn off uh, the drop shadow, drop shadow opacity I'm going to drop that down to zero because I just want a flat shape so if I bring this back up now to fit and what I need to do is I need to find where my swipe starts so you can see it just ever so slightly on the left so that is just out of shot okay where the playhead is so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my shape again and I'm going to come into the position here on the X axis and I'm going to start moving this until that is literally on the edge of the frame and then I'm going to add a keyframe to my position on the shape and then I'm going to click back into the timeline and I'm going to go a few frames across, click back on my shape, come back into the position and holding shift I'm using the down arrows to move, oh sorry I'm doing the wrong one, it's the up arrow I should be using, there we go. So I'm using the up arrow holding shift to move this shape across to there. That's automatically set a keyframe. I'm going to come back to the timeline and I'm going to jump a few more frames across. Click back on my basic shape and then into my position again and move that white line across with this. So we're back matching the transition. Again, move the playhead along, a few frames there, and then back on the shape, back into the position, holding shift, using the up arrow to move that white line with the change that we want. So when we play that back now, we've got a nice before and after with a white line dividing it. Now obviously the white line, adding the white line, yes, we're doing a little bit of keyframing and masking there to achieve that. So you might say, you know, that's more than you want to do. And maybe that is why people buy a plugin. But to me, spending money on something like such a simple effect, which can be achieved so simply just using a basic mask and a little bit of keyframing there, seems madness to me. So I just thought I'd share that um, and you can see just these couple of examples we've done that super quickly it's a nice effect you can do whatever direction or from top to bottom or left to right whatever you want to do it's all exactly the same you just use that simple mask draw the mask keyframe the control points and you've got complete control to make that effect so I hope you found that helpful if you did give the video a thumbs up thank you very much for watching and um, that's it for today I'll see you next time.